and careful in work, skillful, ingenious, expert, correct, careful, as in speech, thorough, meticulous, tidy, dainty. And that's from Pui Pukui. And um, today we are so happy to have the computer cleanup and organization. So we're gonna be learning how to clean and organize our computer, both inside and out. And we have three presenters today. Um, first is Brian Hiera, who is our UH Maui College IT manager with 20 plus years of experience, of professional experience in software development, systems administration, and system integration. Along with Laureen Kodani is the educational communications and technology developer at Maui College. And uh, Deanna Kamakai Aina Reese is a producer director in the IT media department at the University of Hawaii Maui College. Um, thank you so much, um, Brian, Laureen, and Deanna. Um, there's such an interest in this topic. So I'll take, I'll, I'll give it to you, Brian. Okay, uh, Lorene, did you wanna go over the housekeeping on, on questions and comments or we'll just take it as we? Um, sure, if everyone could sort of jot down their questions and hold it till after the presentation, uh, we would be more than happy to answer your questions and address it at that time. Uh, we think it might be a little bit better to work through the topics that we're going to cover today and then address your questions. Okay, well, um, thank you everybody for showing up. Um, again, I'm Brian, I'm the IT manager here at the college and uh, glad to be part of the series. Uh, we worked, I worked with um, Lorene and Deanna on this. Um, and we're going to be covering, uh, I guess, four, a few, four different areas, uh, tidy and clean, um, folder management, and search for files, as well as tips and tricks. So I'm going to start off with the uh, clean and tidy uh, section. And this is clean and tidy in terms of um, physically cleaning your computer, making sure it's uh, clean and, uh, you know, operating uh in an in a efficient way. So cleaning your computer is a regular part of maintenance and it will keep your computer running smoothly and help to maintain a healthy uh, work environment. Um, it's just essential for system longevity and reliability, creates a healthy work environment. Um, and uh, we all know that a clean workspace is a, uh, provides better productivity in terms of your day-to-day -day tasks. All right, so what can go wrong um, if your computer is not clean? Well, a lot of things can go wrong and they're not good. Uh, overheating uh, caused by dust blocking uh, the cooling ports can cause instability. Um, it can also cause malfunction of particles get into the keyboard, mouse, uh, and obstruct the sensors or switches. You Sometimes things won't work properly, a key won't work. Um, damage. Uh, dust will harbor moisture and moisture over time will cause things to corrode, uh, could etch uh, and stain, even scratch your screen or the, the various components uh, causing failure. And um, probably one of the more most important ones is that uh, a filthy, uh, uncleaned area is uh, filthy and can harbor germs. Uh, which is a health risk. Okay, so what should I clean? I mean, everything uh, in, in terms of your PC is cleanable, your computer case or laptop ch chassis, your keyboard, mouse, your monitor screen, as well as your workspace area. So what do we need to clean? So um, here, this is not an exhaustive list. I just came up with a few ideas. And um, one thing that uh, I recently tried to get here on Maui was uh, like a solution to clean my monitor. And I found that is not very available. I, it, I, I couldn't find it um, anywhere. And when I did find it, it was very expensive. It was like $10 for a few ounces that probably wouldn't last very long. So I did some searching and uh, found that you can create 
uh, make your own homemade cleaning solution um, pretty easily. And it's very cheap. It takes equal parts rubbing alcohol and distilled water. Uh, the distilled water is important because tap water has minerals and that can leave um, uh, water spots and streaks on your screen. So uh, you're going to have to fork up a little bit of money for the distilled water. Um, and once you have this combined, you can put it into a misting bottle um, so you can spray it um, on your cloth for easy application. It's important not to use house clean, household cleaners. Um, many of them are harsh and abrasive and can damage the surfaces of your screen or um, the case of your, your um, laptop or peripherals. Um, and if you don't have any of that available, you could always substitute with water. Uh, and this, you know, on uh, aside from leaving streaks and spots in your, your monitor, I think you'll be all right. But um, I'll, I'll get to that later about the, the monitor. Okay, and in, in addition to your cleaning solution, I recommend having two uh, microfiber cloths, one for the monitor use only, and the other for the rest of the components. You don't wanna mix them up because you wanna keep the monitor cloth as clean as possible to avoid scratching or damaging your monitor when you clean it. Also, I would not recommend using paper towels or other types of cloth. Uh, paper towels um, can be quite abrasive on some some of them are quite abrasive and can scratch uh, but also they leave like little fibers as as does terry cloths and other cloths and you'll be your surface will be covered with all this uh, fiber that it doesn't look very nice and kind of can be distracting uh, on screens finally uh, bottled compressed air is always handy and this that's readily available at most uh, hardware stores or you know the office max or target things places like that Okay, so uh, first I'm going to cover cleaning your case or laptop chassis. Um, what you want to do is you want to shut down the system, make sure it's unplugged. Uh, we don't want it to be powered while you're working on it or clean, working to clean it. Um, and uh, you'll be wiping it down with a microfiber. And the, the GIF here is just showing you a little illustration of, you know, you just missed it. You don't want the, the microfiber to be soaking wet. You just want it to be damp. And uh, a, a soaking wet microfiber could cause damage if the liquid gets into into the case or the you know the different components. So just mist it a few sprays. That should be more than enough to pick up the dust on the surface. All right. So here's a little video um, I found on the net. Um, just you can. Clean your keyboard when you. This is sorry. Cleaning your keyboard. You you want to turn it upside down, shake it um, to get all the uh, there's debris and you know garbage in between the keys. Turn it upside down and shaking it will help loosen that. But you can also use a uh, bottled bottled air to blow it out to blow the the uh, the particles out. Um, just keep in mind that. When you blow it out, it goes over your desk and everywhere else. So, um, but do, do it in an area that's uh, that that that's not going to be an issue. Um, once you get the particles out, you can take your microfiber, damp microfiber, and wipe it down uh, to get any uh, dust and and other types of contaminants off. Oops, this is starting again. It's not advancing. Okay, um, next on the list is cleaning the mouse. Um, this is a very straightforward to like the keyboard. This you just wipe it down with your damp uh, microfiber. Uh, many mouse or mice have a scrolling wheel. So I tend to, you know, scroll the wheel, wipe, scroll the wheel, wipe. Just you want to make sure you get everything. That, that part gets oily sometimes if your hand or you know has contaminants on it um, also a really important thing is to inspect the underside of the mouse and uh, make sure that the sensor port is not being obstructed with any type of dust or debris if you have anything in there just you know pick it out or it's typically open it's like it's actually a crevice in the mouse so shaking it or you know 
um, uh, picking out that dust uh, is very helpful because if if there dust remains in there, it actually your mouse can be jerky and inaccurate, and which is kind of a real pain when you trying to to use it. So um, important to keep that sensor port uh, unobstructed. Okay, um, and finally for the the the, the monitor. Um, here again, you want to use a new or washed microfiber to avoid scratching your screen. Uh, you want to make sure the microfiber is dampened um, with a cleaning solution, uh, which avoids water and streak, uh, water spots or streaks. Again, do not use regular chemicals to do this. You'll damage your monitor and you'll regret it. It, it causes discoloration. Uh, uh, hazing um, and it's 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 just not going to be um, your monitor is not going to be you won't be able to get rid of that um, be mindful that your cloth is not too uh, saturated with water you don't want to get liquid into the edges of your monitor as it's there's backlights in there and you'll you'll burn them out and uh, that's not these are not repairable components um, here's a quick uh, demonstration from uh, Agent Meister from Best Buy. Hi. Oops. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Agent Meister from Best Buy, and here are some tips for helping to clean your desktop monitor or laptop screen. Now, there are different types of cleaners that you may use on your screen. Uh, you may have a screen cleaner specifically designed to uh, clean monitors, screens, or even TVs. Um, this is to help protect the actual surface of the screen itself. One thing you do want to avoid is any kind of harsh household cleaners. Things like bleach or even uh, glass cleaners can damage the surface of the actual screen itself. Now, if you don't have any specific um, uh, screen cleaner, uh, you do have some other options, just a spray bottle full of uh, regular water, um, or some people will even put just a little bit of vinegar in there to help uh, clean any stains on the screen itself. Now, it is important when you are cleaning to avoid getting liquid into the electronics, especially the edge itself. A great way to do that is just to use a microfiber cloth and lightly dampen it, and then just use that to actually wipe your screen down. Again, making sure that you're not getting any kind of liquid into those edges. And cleaning your screen really is that easy. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Okay, I think that ends my first section on clean and tidy. Yep. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Lorene. Thanks, Brian. Okay, let me get this up. Thanks. So I think everyone is now seeing the file and folder management section of the presentation. So I'm covering just some basics about file and folder management and how to be clean in the sense where your desktop is not cluttered. So a quick question, how many of you, uh, how clean are your desktops, your computer desktops? Use the reactions icon to um, indicate truthfully how clean or how clear or organized is your computer desktops. Oh, good. Quite a few of you are seeing some are like shocked, some are seeing thumbs up. Well, congratulations to those of you who have a thumbs up because that's really important to helping us be effective. Um, so let's go ahead. Sorry, I have a sensitive mouse and it tends to jump around a little. So what's file and folder management? It basically uh, is the procedure or structure for organizing your files. And there's, I tried to break it down to real easy parts. So there's four things to consider about file and folder management, creating files, uh, storing your files, retrieving your files, and sharing your files. Uh, we won't spend too much time on each of the slides. I've designed the slides to be a resource for you after the presentation. So we'll cl cl quickly go through the concept of it. Um, so why would we want to be organized with our file and folder management? It really does help us to maximize efficiency. It minimizes confusion. How many of you get confused or frustrated when you can't find something that you created? 
it reduces redundancy and therefore reduces um, a, a space on your computer that you could use for other things. And obviously it saves time because when we're organized, we usually, uh, the flow of things usually uh, is better. One of the main key goals about file and folder management is the fact that you want to be able to easily retrieve your files. And you can't do that unless you know where they are. And you won't know where they are unless you're organized. So keep that in mind. It's about easily retrieving your files. So when should we think about file and folder management? Immediately, whenever you receive or create a file, if it is something you first determine if it's something you should keep in your uh, file and folder management system, or if it's something that you could delete. If it's something you can delete, then keep your computer clear of that. But uh, determine first if it's something that you need to keep and then immediately file it. Um, a few seconds now saves you hours later. So where should we save our files? Um, now most everyone is saving their files digitally, but we've also uh, have had opportunity to save our files in a physical manner in an actual uh, cabinet or file drawer. So you want to start with the thought that you want to save or store your files in one place. And that might be the desktop of your computer. And you would have a main folder, uh, would e either be locally on your computer or in the cloud, for example. And then you would have subfolders that categorize uh, subtopics of that main folder. Um, and so how do you create a really good file and folder management system? The key is to create a structured system. And in order to do that, you have to think about a logical hierarchy and what works for you. It's very important that if you're working with others, if you are storing and sharing files with others, uh, part of your team, that you come up with a hierarchy that works for everyone. Um, simple is best. Informative is very important. So the naming conventions that you use will be critical in that. And being extremely consistent and accurate in the way you name your file and folders make it not only easy for you to retrieve, but easy for others to retrieve. And I think probably all of us can say that when we've had to collaborate with others, if uh, there was not a naming convention that was good for everyone, um, inevitably there's somebody that's floundering because they can't find something, right? So be sure that you have a simple but informative uh, naming convention. You're consistent, accurate, and when necessary or possible, archive files. And again, if these are files that you don't need any longer, you can delete them. Um, in very formal records and information management systems, there's actually um, a process or a policy of how long files are kept. And it really depends on the type of files, if it's uh, legal files or government type files or uh, business files that have to be kept for a certain period of time. Um, in your case, it probably does not need to be that formal, but it would be good to come up with a system that says, after X amount of time, we're gonna archive the file if it's, there's no longer activity with that topic or file. And then after X amount of time, we can delete the files. So um, here's a tip. You can also assign colors to your folders in your digital system. So you can uh, assign colors to help you manage your files as well. So I want to do like a real quick comparison in terms of where these files might be stored and to give you a real good picture of the physical versus the digital realm. And for many, if you can imagine the physical realm, it's easier for you to come up with a structured hierarchy and system in the digital realm. So where? Let's think about the one place that we talked about, the main folder. In your physical realm, let's say in your office, that would likely be your file cabinet, right? One file cabinet that may have four drawers or uh, depending on the file cabinet that you have, that would be your one place or main folder per se. In the digital realm, that would be likely be your desktop on your computer. Or if you're using Google at UH My Drive in the cloud, it would be your My Drive. Subfolders in the physical realm would be like your file cabinet drawers, where you might organize things by drawer. In the digital realm, they are folders in your main folder. So, or in the main uh, 
desktop or my drive that you're storing it. So folders might be a course folder or a project folder. And then you would likely have sub subfolders. And in the physical realm, they would be file folders in your cabinet drawers, and they may be organized or grouped or categorized in a logical manner. In the di digital realm, they would be subfolders or files in those folders. For example, if you have a course folder, um, you might have a subfolder titled assignments, just as an example. And then of course the files themselves in the physical realm, they would be an actual file in one of those folders. In the digital realm, they would be files in either your subfolders or your sub subfolders or even in your main folder. Files can be um, in any one of those locations. Um, and not to worry, I know we're going through this fairly quickly, but this resource will be made available for you after. So examples of a course folder, let's just use the course folder as an example. The main folder that would be in your one main location, for example, if you're using your Google at UH My Drive, your main folder would be something like CRN 100 or, you know, course uh, alpha and numeric. Um, that would be the folder file or name. And again, that main folder, that would be the name um, for uh, the, everything that has to do with that course. And then if in the table that you're looking at in the second column from your left, if you created a subfolder in that main folder of your course called assignments, there might be a sub subfolder for chapter one. And again, you have to determine what system will work for you. Um, the key is that you're organized and you're consistent and accurate in the way you do this. So maybe, all of the assignments for chapter one would be in that sub subfolder. And then files in that sub subfolder might be A1.1 for assignment week one, number one, or A1.2 assignment week one, number two. And notice that we're trying to keep the names of the files short, but a uh, organized and strategic system makes it easy for you to know what that file is about or what's in that file even before you open it at, at a quick glance. So let's take a look at the next column to the right where you might have a folder called presentations. Again in that folder it you might have something for chapter one and then you might have um, what I normally do and again do what works best for you. The key thing is that you're consistent and organized and accurate. I like to put the date first and then like a brief description after and I always start out with the year because think about how they are listed uh, and organized in the list. If you put the month first and then the date and then the year, uh, they are not going to be organized or grouped by semester, for example, or even uh, by year. They're all going to be grouped by month and then by day. And so you're going to have like spring and fall folders and uh, files kind of mixed up. So I like to start out with the year. 2021, and then the month, 01, and then 27, because that will, in the hierarchy of the way it, the list appears for you to look at, it will appear in chronological order. And then of course, underscore and chapter one. Notice I used an underscore and not like a dash or anything like that. Um, these are some basic uh, tips for naming files based on the different operating systems and how they read um, file names. Uh, the column to the right of that, if you had a course folder, uh, CRN 100, and then you'd like to organize all of your chapter things in one subfolder, you might have a chapter one, and then you might have a sub subfolder in that that's assignments, and then maybe another sub subfolder, as you can see in the column to the right of that, called presentation. So again, depending on how you want to organize your files, that would depend, uh, that would determine how your structured or hierarchy is set up. And again, don't worry, you're gonna have this to be able to look at this um, later on and we'll answer questions later on as well. So let's talk a little bit about naming convention examples. And in this example, I'm doing this from an instructor purpose. Um, I tend to name my files the same for me and for student purposes, but some people like to have files for instructor purposes and some for student purposes. So I'm gonna give you examples for both. Uh, for example, if your course folder again is CRN 100, notice that the description is again the course alpha and then the number. So it's short, it's brief, it's informative, you know exactly what's in there. 
if you have a course item um, that's called assignment and that's the folder in that folder or file name it might be called a1.1 as i mentioned earlier and a for me stands for the lao lima tool that this assignment is relevant for assignments tool in lao lima week one first assignment or a1.3 lao lima tool assignments a for assignments week one and then dot uh, three for third assignment it's a, if it's a forum, it could be in the same module or the same uh, subfolder, but it would be F for forums, one for the week again, week one, dot two, and it would be the second assignment. Notice that there's A1.1, F1.2, and then A1.3 for me personally. And again, you don't have to do it the way I do. You can do it the way it works best for you. I like to order it in the... Um, the way that students should accomplish the assignment. So that's the reason why you're seeing a little bit of a difference in the numbering there. Uh, presentation again, 2021-0127. So today's presentation, uh, for my purposes, I would label it 2021-0127. Uh, and it's simply the presentation date. You can add an underscore and a brief description after that if you choose to. Uh, if you had a course item that was a final project, I would label it FP for final project one and the Lao Lima tool first assignment. And in, in my Lao Lima class, course, I actually create um, an item in Lao Lima called final project where I put all of the information for the final project in that uh, navigation item in Lao Lima. Uh, and then FP two would be final project two. So it's really, really simple. And the more simple you are, you'll find the easier it is for you to retrieve and organize, not just in your mind, but on your computer as well. Um, so for student purposes, you might spell it out a little bit more so it's um, easier to understand for students. So you might spell out assignment 1.1 underscore getting started. So it's assignment of the Lao Lima tool again, one for week one, dot one for the first assignment of that week, and then underscore the topic of the assignment. And the same thing for forum, it would be forum 1.2 underscore business etiquette. They're gonna do a forum topic uh, about business etiquette. And if they're doing a quiz, it might be quiz 1.3 underscore chapter one. Now, keep in mind, these are file names of things that you have on your computer uh, or in your file cabinet or in your cloud storage. They're not necessarily the way they may be named in your Lao Lima site. These are your supporting materials for what you're doing for your course. Hope that makes sense. Um, so just briefly to review tips about file and folder management, file immediately, make this the first step, determine if you need to keep it or not, and then file it immediately, whether it's something you created or something you received from someone else. Um, organize, again, this is very critical for um, you to be efficient. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a logical hierarchy. So your folders, your subfolders, your files, they should have a clear structure. And if you're working with a team, the team should understand the structure. In, in uh, work that I've done with clients before in the, in the private sector, we always had a structure that we created and we actually documented it and everybody had a copy of the document so they understood how to, how to manage files as well. Naming conventions, be short, be descriptive, something that helps you know what it is before you open the file. And then backup. This is uh, fairly basic. I think that everyone understands just in case something goes wrong. So be sure you have a backup somewhere and cull your files. So the more room that you have, it makes it easier for you to find files because there's less things for you to sift through and to go through as you're looking for files. All right, I'm going to now turn it over to Deanna. I think Deanna, is it, or Brian? Back to Brian. Thanks, Brian. All right, that's a really good overview of uh, how to how to uh, handle your file organization. Thank you, Lorreen. Uh, my my next uh, thing that I'm going to be going over is. Once you file it, how do you find, how do you find it? That's that's uh, often my problem. Um, there, there's many ways of doing that, and um, I found a really good. Rather than me run through this and talk about it, I found a, a really good video on YouTube that I'm just gonna 
um, start here for, for us to watch. So here we go. Have you ever downloaded or saved a file only to have trouble finding it later? Trying to track down a misplaced file can be frustrating or even stressful. But if this ever happens to you, don't panic. The file is probably still on your computer, and there are a few good ways to locate it. Let's take a look at some of the techniques you could use to retrieve your files. If you recently edited the file you need, you may be able to find it in the recent files. Open the file explorer and locate the recent file section. In older versions of Windows, it may appear in a different place. If you come across the file you need, just double click it to open it. You can also try opening the application where you created the file. For example, if it's an Excel spreadsheet, open Excel and look through the files displayed on the start screen. If you're having trouble hunting down a file that you downloaded from the internet, like a photo attached to an email, you can check the downloads folder. A list of your recently downloaded files will appear. You can browse the list for the file you need. Other good places to check for a misplaced file are the default folders. If you don't specify a location when saving a file, Windows will place certain types of files in these folders. You can click on this PC. In older versions, this may be called My Computer. Here you will see the default folders. You can check these files and folders to see if you spot the file. For example, if you're looking for a photo, try examining the Pictures folder. If you are still struggling to find a file, you can use the search bar in the File Explorer. Just begin typing a file name or keywords. Any file with those words in the name will display below. You can also use the search bar in the lower left of the desktop. If you're using an older version, you may need to open the Start menu to see it. Unlike in the File Explorer, this search bar will look for more than just files, including results from the internet, names of applications, and even emails you've written containing search terms. The number of results may make it hard for you to easily locate the file you need. If you think you may have deleted the file by mistake, it may still be in the recycle bin. Double-click the recycle bin icon on the desktop to open it. If you discover the file you need, click and drag it to the desktop to remove it from the recycle bin. Finally, once you've located the file, you may want to make it easier for you to find in the future. For example, you can rename the file by right-clicking and selecting Rename. For this file, you might consider moving it to the Pictures folder. And the next time you want to open that file, you'll be able to access it quickly and easily. Creating opportunities for a better life. Okay, that was very short and sweet to the point. So that's it for uh, the Windows searching for files. So I'm going to hand it over to Deanna. All right, so we're just going to kind of briefly go a few of the different ways that you can find files on a Mac computer. And uh, so you can see, you know, there's Recent, Stack, Spotlight, and Finder. And I'll share with you guys what I do mostly. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen with you guys so you can see. So We get to see De Deanna's desktop. <laughs> see how organized she is. So here it is. As you can see, I just have a couple of rows of files here and folders. So um, what I've done over the years is I never let this go beyond three columns, excuse me, column. I never let this go beyond three columns deep. When it gets to three columns, I put things away. Now, I even have a couple of folders on my desktop that are just very general and I just threw stuff in there for now. 
and I'm going to be organizing them again later. And you'll see on our tips and tricks, one of the things that I tell you to set aside time. So, you know, I have this sort of general, more desktop, and that's when I back up some important files or take stuff home that I might need to work on. I also have one labeled more crap. <laughs> that's just my funny way of saying more stuff, more, more desktop, you know, so it was on the desktop, but now it's here and I'm going to, you know, back it up and then organize it. So one of the simplest ways when you're looking, if you uh, uh, had a file that was open recently, if you go to the finder here up in the left, the Apple menu, click on it, there's something called recent items. You can see the different apps here that I recently uh, opened. Here's some documents. And of course, different servers that I've clicked on to. Another way that you can find documents is from within a program. So here in Office, if you have Office, there's recent files, right? You could also have pinned or things that are shared with me. Nobody shares with me. So that's, that's when you're connected to Office 365. Um, and I don't, pin anything like ever but you have a list of recent files within different programs sometimes you know office it's here sometimes you have to go to the file menu and say open recent right there's also a more button and again you know it shows here um <clears throat> stacks let me give you a little demo so like i said my i just sort of threw these oh sorry i'm opening illustrator i don't want to do that that's what happens when you drag something onto the dock too hastily okay <laughs> all right so i'm just dragging these things randomly around my desktop and i have seen people where their entire desktop is just filled. Now, one of the things you might notice too about my desktop is that I do not have any background picture. I do that on purpose because for me, it's just distracting. If I do have anything on the desktop, I can't see it, right? It's just, it drives me crazy. And what's funny is I had this configuration earlier and I created this untitled folder to throw everything in because I couldn't handle looking at all this stuff all over my desktop. I don't know what it is. So stacks, if, and I always recommend to people with Macs, either get a three button mouse, right? Regular USB or wireless USB, or set your settings in your mouse, in your system settings to be able to right click. Yeah, second mouse click, right click. You right click on the desktop there's something here called use stacks when you click on it oh my gosh look at that isn't that cool so what it does is that it uh takes all your um files that are just randomly on the desktop and it arranges it into stacks according to the type of file or you can always change if you hear see group stacks by date last open, date added, date modified, date created, tags. And we'll briefly look at tags when we go to the finder shortly. So I do, I have it by kind. So when I click on images, then it shows me everything in that stack, all these images in that stack, right? I have a few movies. Here's all the movies that are on the desktop in that stack. So stacks is like a really quick and easy way to organize your desktop into columns so that you don't have a whole bunch of stuff just smattered around your desktop. So I'm actually going to undo the stacks. This is going to drive me crazy. So I'm putting them, I'm putting it all back in their, their temporarily designated untitled folder. And so the finder, if you look here, Whenever you don't have a program that's active, it's you're on the finder. So you can access the finder in different ways, right? You have the finder here, 
right? You can do different things. New finder window. That opens this general window here. You can double click on your hard drive or you can double click on any folder, right? So what we see here is there's a, oh, I'm sorry. We forgot to briefly look at the spotlight. Spotlight is here in the upper right hand corner. It's a little magnifying glass. Now, something to keep in mind is with the latest versions of OS, I'm, I'm pretty sure Big Sur has it as well, but it started back, I believe, in Mojave, um, where Spotlight Search also gives you internet stuff, stuff in iTunes. I mean, it gives you all kinds of stuff. So if we were to type something, like I just typed in COVID, right? It gives me website links here. It gives me something that I edited in Final Cut. It gives me some PowerPoint files from presentations from a webinar I hosted last week. And then it gives me different things that are um, documents like text or um, Word documents and then PDF documents and then folders, right? You can also click here, show all in Finder. And, you know, the same things come up. Right, so COVID is here. You have folders, documents, events. You even have movies that are on my computer. Um, it doesn't have um, the website reminders, but it does have uh, the website links. It has events and reminders here. Now, I don't use Spotlight. I use the Finder all the time right and it's just because i know something is somewhere and instead of me going to the folder and scroll scroll okay there it is i just look up here and as long as you remember what your file was named and so those file naming conventions like loreen said you come up with a system for yourself and that really really helps even when people send you things don't be afraid to rename those files so that it's related to what the person uh, sent you, but it's something you can remember, right? And file it away immediately. So if we want to look up, uh, and sometimes I do this, I don't recommend this if you have a lot of files of the same type. I go MP4, right? That's an extension. So here you see you can do either by kind mpeg4 movie or if the name matches the movie this extension is there it'll come up right so i click on the name matches everything in my list is going to be an mp4 now you see that i have my i have a lot i do a, it's an editing computer so <laughs> but here of course you know you can if the file name is short it's really weird whatever you can see I haven't renamed this one yet. I haven't gotten to it. But you, as columns up here, you can see different columns. And this is really um, useful when you do folders and subfolders and stuff. So you can kind of see the progression. Now, another, you can organize when you search for things. This is, it'll show you icons. I haven't found this overly useful unless you need to see what's in here. However, you can see that when you click on a file, it shows you, at least if it's not a movie, it'll show you. So it'll show you like a preview of the document or whatever. So you can see here, this is kind of a preview of a Word doc. When you're in the list view here, you can sort. So here is the sorting function, right? So you can group it. Um, the finder calls it using groups. Right now it says none. So if you look here, it seems to be in alphabetical order, but not always. Um, if we go to the applications folder, you'll see it isn't, right? iStat menus and Zoom are on top. Zoom should be all the way on the bottom. Extras are down here, right? But if I put this back in list mode, for some reason, list mode is set so that it should show you alphabetical order. If it doesn't go by 
you know, choose by name. If we did none, stuff would be uh, in general alphabetical order, but not always, right? So just know that you can sort by name. You can sort by application category, the date last open, the date it was added, the size of the file. I don't know, maybe you're trying to clean out your, your, um, your computer because you're running out of space and you want to archive. You could say, I want to see all files that are one gig or more, right? So it'll change the size. And one thing uh, we'll go over very briefly is tags, right? Loreen had mentioned tags. So tags in on a Mac, if I wanted to tag something, so let's go back to some, our untitled folder here. And here's our Kupuna Smart opening. When you right click on it, there's a whole bunch of things. If you go down here, you see these little colored circles with tags. If you just click on a circle, it'll give it a color. But when you look at it and you look at the tag, you can see here it says purple. Well, that's not very useful, right? However, if I had created a tag here, it says SA Webinars. If I say SA Webinars and then I want to get rid of this one that says purple, hit return. Now let me go and I'm just going to randomly choose another file to add that tag, the same tag. So you go to tags, they come up here. I want SA webinars. Okay. Let's use, I created another tag here called UHF, right? It's a different color. And we'll just randomly choose for our demonstration, another one to make with that tag. So right now you can see that's not in the order. However, if I sort it by tags, the tags are now sorted together. And here's the name of the tag, right? And then everything that doesn't have a tag, of course, will go below. So, um, you know, one of the key things, like Lorene said, is about naming your folders so that when you search, you know how to search. If I know the name of the folder, I mean, excuse me, the file, or I'm relatively sure, like, I'll show you an example. I know we have a video called app. If I go name matches app, all of this stuff, because it'll take just part of that word and whatever, Three, those three letters, APP, are in a file name, it'll bring it up, right? So you can see all of this stuff. Well, that's not helping me if I want to find a specific file that is actually called UHMC app demo. So you can see even before I hit the name, it's here. When you click on the file, it shows you the hierarchy, right? It's on the desktop. It's in that untitled folder and there's the file. So lots of different ways that you can find things on your Mac. And um, hopefully, you know, that gave you some ideas. If you want uh, more information, you can always contact me and, you know, we'll help you figure that out together. Okay, so um, to close out our webinar today, we have just a few tips and tricks. And um, Brian, if you would be so kind to help read them because you do such a good job with, with some of these. Um, go ahead, Brian. Thanks, Deanna, for giving us such a good um, demonstration on 5,000. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Okay, I think my mic is working. Um, so some tips and tricks. Clean and tidy keeps your computer healthy. Be mindful of who has access to your files and devices. Be an efficient file searcher for a better workday. Keep files organized across devices, G Drive and email in, in similar ways. Don't eat or drink around your devices. Cover devices or use cases when not in use. 
set time aside regularly to manage files and clean devices. Sorry. Thanks, Brian. So um, at this time, Joyce, I'm not sure how much time we have left, but we'd like to open it up for some questions from our, our wonderful colleagues. Does anybody have questions or ideas that you want to run by us that we can help you think through? I have a quick we question. should have played a game. I thought about this. We should have played a game and had everyone take a screenshot of your desktop and then share it with the rest of us. <laughs> All right. So I so guess someone had a question. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it was me, Kim. Um, there's no way to give a file of alias name, is there? So you could keep the original title. So if somebody tells you what they sent you, you could also name it your own title, but you wouldn't delete the original title. Um, if you have the program that the file was created in, you can open the file and do a save as and give it your own name so that it makes sense to you, but you still have the original file and, but now you have a copy that you can easily find because you named it. On a, I'm not sure about on a Mac, but on a Windows platform, you can create a shortcut, which is just a reference to that file and you can name the shortcut, whatever you want. Um, but it's just basically a pointer with a different name to that file. So that, that would work as well. And also, if it helps um, on both platforms or operating systems um, for Word or some of those files, you can add info to the file. So um, we don't have time today to, to show you how to do specifically how to do those things. But there's ways that you can add information uh, within metadata or, you, or maybe not so much metadata, but information about the file. So uh, on a Mac, you would right click on the file and say get info and you can add like a little note. Um, so tags can be like little notes as well if you organize things a certain way, if that helps. I see yeah. some questions in um, the, ch the chat. Um, so I'll, I think they're related to my thing, so I'll cover it. So I think Patty asked uh, cover or towels. Um, I actually was going to incorporate this, but I didn't have time. But um, microfiber cloths are really good for cleaning electronics. Um, they're available. This was at uh, Walmart, and it was like a dollar, two bucks for two of them. Um, and when they get dirty, you can rinse them, dry them out, and then use them again. Uh, they're, they're really nice to have around. Uh, Velma is asking regularly, I, I guess I use that term um, in my my section, and I, I'd say, you know, once a month. So, you know, and, and that, that's probably a good time frame. Uh, yeah, clean computer that is, oops. Yeah, and that goes for um, cleaning out your files too, and especially email. Um, I kind of neglected it for a few months and a few weeks ago ended up, uh, I archived a whole bunch of emails and then I deleted them. 15,000 plus emails, a bunch of them with attachments that takes up so much space you wouldn't believe. So, you know, I, I and it makes it harder sometimes to find things, but if you see my uh my email is organized all into folders and subfolders as well so yeah there, I, there was oh. oh oh this is linda linda um uh, talking about you know when we have so many folders so many files is there ever a time when we going to have too much and we have to you know get rid of it or um is there an overload time um, Linda, as I was mentioning, uh, depending on who you're working with with those files, if those files are personal to you, then you determine when something has not been looked at or used or a project will, you know, is done in PAL for a while, whether you should archive it uh, or delete it. Now, if it's something that you don't want to completely delete, but you need the space on your computer, you can get an external hard drive and archive items off of your computer onto an external hard drive. So if you're someone that really likes 
to keep everything. Um, our Google at UH My Drive, at the moment we have unlimited space. And I say at the moment because those things are uh, things that can change at any given point in time. And the system might say, well, now we're gonna limit um, how much storage space you have in the cloud. So you could organize and store, temporarily store things in the cloud. But even then, if it's stuff that you're really not gonna look at, I recommend that you get an external hard drive if you really don't want to delete them completely. And if you're working with a team, come up with a system that says after X amount of months, then these types of files get archived. A after a year, they get deleted or archived off the devices or the system. Does yeah, for example, when you're working in Google Drive with Teams, start a shared drive or at least have a folder that you can share with the team because I have so many documents in my Google Drive that have been shared with me and it's just this document, this document, this document, this document. And so I create shortcuts in my drive and I organize them into folders, you know, depending on what the project or the team that I'm working with, if we don't have a team drive or shared drive, they renamed it. Um, because it just gets really messy if you look at, you know, your sh what was shared with you in Google, right? So. Brian, Patty's asking yeah. about, uh, I think she's referring to the CPU. Um, yeah, uh, I, um, it's best to keep that off the ground. Um, I, I, t I tend, if, if you can't, if that's not an option, um, putting a little block or a book or something to raise it a few inches, uh, just because dust will settle onto the ground and uh, the, 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 the PC or, or, or um, what, people sometimes call the CPU has active fans in there and it'll suck the that the, that dust into the, the the computer and cover the inside with that dust so having it uh, a little higher than the ground level is good at a minimum probably even better to be on a desktop uh, away from dust and, um, that's at the surface level the ground surface level Any other questions or ideas? Him uses old textbooks. Yes, flooding. That's always an issue, too. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? <laughs> 